Hi folks, this is Dr. Kat Schreier with Water Citizen Media and the Water Show Special Edition here at WEF Tech. And we just come out of the awards ceremony and one of the awards was given to Linda and Gary DeCock, right? And, um, and tell us a little bit about what you guys have just done and what got you this award. Well, <laughs> Gary has been a volunteer for Water for People for many years and we've always done small events. Oh, but since we, when we retired, we wanted to do more for Water for People. And so three years ago, we paddled in a, in a tandem kayak the length of the Mississippi from up in northern Minnesota down to the Gulf of Mexico and then went to Weftech in New Orleans. This year, we did another trip, um, a different trip. We um, took a canoe and we started on the border of Upper Michigan and Wisconsin. We paddled the Wisconsin River from the headwaters down to the Mississippi River, and that was 430 miles. Then did another 420 down the Mississippi, almost to St. Louis, and then decided to paddle upstream the, um, on the Illinois to the Des Plaines, over to the Sanitary Canal, to the Chicago River, and made it to Navy Pier here in Chicago for yeah, a that, that, That's the river that was reversed yes. Yes. here in <laughs> Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> right, because otherwise it's usually pretty hard to paddle upstream in a river, right? Well, there are a lot of dams on the river, and that kind yeah. of creates pools, and so you've got some slack water. But it's still a lot of work to come up river. Now, you have a lot of experience with water and with rivers from your prior profession, yes. Yes. right? What, what was your profession? I spent about 30 years working at wastewater treatment plants in Michigan. Uh, started in the laboratory and ended up as a operations and maintenance supervisor. Nice. And, um, and yeah, here at WEFTEC, we've got, we've got the full gamut of people who work in this industry. We've got <laughs> folks who are uh, general managers. We've got folks who are operators. We've got um, the folks outside of the plants and the manufacturers and the consultants and everything else. So how, how, uh, how long have you been involved with WEF? Uh, I've been a member for over 30 years. So yeah. uh, we've been involved with Water for People for about 10 years. So we've been working to try to strengthen that connection uh, between Water for People, WEF, and the membership. Yeah, we we talked to uh, Water for People earlier, and of course they were started out of the drinking water side over at American Water Works Association, but have always, you know, have always worked with WEF. But now they're they're looking more towards the the global needs in developing countries for sanitation. How? Uh, how much awareness is there in the wastewater industry of water for people as a sanitation uh, provider as well as water supply? Well, we hope to increase that. There is always some, but uh, yeah, you're right. Some of the roots of water for people are in the uh, drinking water side, but uh, water is a cycle and we all play a role. And so certainly WEF has a, a huge opportunity here to support this organization and make it even more successful. Yeah. Do you think there's more awareness now? I, mean, I think of it, things like Matt Damon and going on strike if people won't, you know, saying he's not going to use the toilet anymore unless people uh, become more aware of the sanitation needs around the world and stuff like that. I think there's more uh, access through the media to the audience, and so I think it is easier to get the word out and yeah. uh, spread that message. So how did you guys spread the message of, of your trip? Did you use any social media? Did you tweet about it? Did you put Facebook posts up? Did you have a following? We did have a following, and that was one of the best parts of it. Before we did the Mississippi, um, I put up a Facebook page. Immediately people started following, not only friends, but people that we didn't know. I had people that lived along the river um, say, here's my cell phone. I live at mile marker so-and-so. Let us know if you need help. So we had people all the way down the river that were interested in what we were doing and wanted to, wanted to help us if they could. The same was true on this last trip. Total strangers would call us from the shore saying, what can we do to help? Can we, can we give you water? Um, one woman said, I just wish we could do more. And mm. so that's, that restores your faith in humanity. Yeah. But also it spreads the word about Water for People. We flew the Water for People flag um, down the river and up the river. Wow. And um, people would ask us about Water for People. Also, here in the organization, we had great support. Well, for, well, from Water for People, um, for, for what, from what, from our, our own um, organization in Michigan, friends and family. And, and that's, you know, that's probably as important as the fundraising aspect. Yes. Um, letting people know what's going on. 
How, how big are those uh, lists now? How many people are on those pages? I'm not very good at that. <laughs> <laughs> over, over 500 likes. Uh, yeah. Nice. On the, on the nice. Yeah. Our, our fundraising goal was $10 per mile, and we exceeded that. We raised wow. almost $13,000. Wow, and on that's the Mississippi, amazing. We were able to raise a little over seventeen thousand dollars. Yeah. So, are you able to continue staying in touch with those people and putting posts up? And are they sharing with each other? Oh, and, <laughs> yes, very, yeah. very much so. In fact, I have a lot of new Facebook friends after this trip, and a lot of them chime in. We had one experience. We were not able to paddle a few miles on the last day because we had to go through a no trespassing area to to get there, and the police caught us as we were trying to sneak in there. Um, and the officer um, tried to help us. He tried to call and get permission, and when he couldn't, he gave us some alternatives. And afterwards, we were able to get his picture with us and the picture of, the, of his, his vehicle. And now he is one of the followers, and he likes our posts as well. <laughs> nice, nice. You know, it, it, you raise a good point about, about wanting help, and, and um, that, uh, you know, and in, in, in the opportunity to help through social media. And one of the things that we've seen with Harvey in particular and and uh, and, and uh, Irma and Maria, the hurricanes that we've had this season, is there were so many people who had developed followings for their businesses or their community groups or whatever, yeah. who when they had no other way of communicating, were able to post like daily accounts of, we're not sure if we're going to get evacuated. Well, now it looks like we're going to get evacuated. Okay, we're in the car right now. We're leaving. Friends are putting us up. We just got home. We're assessing the damage. We're doing okay, but our neighbors aren't. Here's the help that we need. Mm -hmm. I mean, how how powerful is it to be able to just connect with people personally and directly with social media when you're in that sort of situation? When you, they're actually feeling they have a relationship with you, right? Absolutely, and and they do have a relationship. When we had trouble, when we had a tough day. I'd look at my Facebook page, and people would be saying, oh, you guys are doing great. Keep it up. You know, we're following you. We know where you are. Gary had a satellite tracker, and so people knew where we were every 10 minutes. And that is a powerful stimulus to keep going, and it's also very comforting. Yeah. It's, it would if you don't mind including us, yes. I want to yes. thank you. We are supporters of Water for People, supporters. We went to the event last night, and I really want an opportunity to meet you both. You're <laughs> pioneers in the industry. I, I absolutely love what you're doing and have a lot of respect for you. Thank you so much. No, I, I want to take this opportunity to thank you. Yes, yes. Well, thank you for your interview earlier. Tony interviewed with us. <laughs> um, and uh, so you have fans. Look at that. Oh, a lot <laughs> of fans. Nice. <laughs> Yeah. We're making an interesting story that catches their attention, and that's, that's the vehicle, and to introduce them to water for people. Beautiful, beautiful. And then getting a younger generation engaged. We've yeah. had so many of the young professionals here at the conference come up and talk to us about it. And that is also important because we are old. We're not going to be here forever. We see the horizon. And yeah. so whatever we can do in these years to get another yeah. generation engaged is about the most important Passing thing. the torch. Yep. Yes. Yep. Well, and, and especially, I think especially for, for some of the older generation that doesn't have as much time and financial resources if they're not working anymore and, yeah. and, and budget to fly all over the place, yeah. that you can still use social media. It's not just for young people, but you can use social media <laughs> to connect kind of. and engage and, and, and pass on your knowledge, right, right. to a, a broad audience very quickly. So, so if there's anything we can do to help with, with that aspect and okay. helping to get the word out, please let us know. Well, thank you. Thank you. When, when we know what we're doing, we will keep you informed. Well, is there any, speaking of which, is there a Facebook page or a hashtag or something that you'd like to give to the audience here of where they can follow you for your next voyage? Absolutely. Um, on Facebook, we are, make sure I say this right, Paddle with, Paddle with Purpose River Voyages. And that will get you right to us. And Paddle with Purpose, River Voyages, and I'm Dr. Catcher, and I'm here with Linda and Gary, and they've just won the awards here at Weftick, and uh, thank you so much for all that you guys do for Water for People and the water industry. Thank you very much. Thank you.